Hi everyone and welcome back. So this week I interviewed 2019 Apprentice finalist Lewis Ellis. Here's how it went. Thank you for coming on and agreeing to do this. Really, no I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where it is yet. So I mean, <laughs> don't thank me just now because I might just ditch it. Thanks. <laughs> Right, so what made you sign up for The Apprentice and would you recommend it to others? Um, I signed up because I used to keep an eye on different things that were coming out on TV, like different shows that were cast and I was like, oh, one day maybe I'll apply for one. And I said a few in the past and I was like, oh, that's quite cool. And I applied, never heard anything back. Um, and I saw The Apprentice was hiring. Now I'd watched it for a few years and I actually never considered being at a point where I could take part, but actually this year when it came on i thought you know what i've been freelancing for quite a few years i've built up a career i've got a master's degree now um i feel like i could maybe get on there like and so i just applied anyway and i just sort of spoke about who i am as a person what sort of ethos and my morals and my behaviors makes me a different to everyone else and i feel like i'm very different so i kind of outlined that on paper and sent it off never expected to hear anything genuinely didn't for, i actually forgot about it so i didn't i didn't remember i, just, I sent it off and forgot about it and i was in the gym and I just left and I got an email saying, um, you're invited to the interview. And I was like, shit. <laughs> but I've never considered hearing back. So I was like panicking because it says you need to wear a suit. And I didn't have a suit. You need, I had shirts, but they didn't fit. I had ties, they were scruffy. Like, I just, I just sort of never bought workwear because I could never really afford it. And then I went into digital marketing. We didn't have to wear it. So I was like, crap, need a suit. So I went out and bought a fresh suit, new ties, and like a haircut and everything. Uh, and yeah, that's that's why I applied. I applied just because I, I felt like I was at a point in my career where maybe I could be a good contender. My friend said, you know, you're an entrepreneurial person. Now, I was meeting a lot of business owners and they said, we think that you're the sort of person that's going to go far. And it was like, people were saying stuff to me, but I just, I still don't believe it. Like, I just feel like I'm just me and I'm just trying. That's all I can do. So that's why I applied. So would you recommend that? Obviously, uh, now or? Yeah. Yeah, a thousand percent. Like, look, anyone that's thinking about going on The Apprentice has to has to understand that you're going to get the piss taken out of you. You're going to be edited quite a lot. You you know, sometimes things happen and it gets switched and it looks like, you know, you might do something really good. It comes across terrible or it looks terrible and you don't even get mentioned. So if you're going to do it, be aware. It's going to be edited. You're going to look a bit of a tip. Um, but I recommend it, yeah, because exposure is exposure, regardless of whether people are laughing or not. What it did for me was um, none of my friends or family really know what I'm up to. They like In my professional life and my personal life are very different. So you know, I attend lots of marketing meetings. I go to the networking events in the evening. I go and, and interview entrepreneurs and I was going out and knocking on doors, but I'd never speak about that to my family or friends. So no one actually knew that's what I did. So they, they just saw me as a guy who always has fun and messes around. They didn't realize that in the back of that for years, I've been really grafting my ass off. Um, so what it did was it brings that to the forefront. So, you know, the exposure in itself is fantastic. Everyone all of a sudden sees you and they go, shit, didn't know he was doing that. Didn't know that sort of person he was. And actually the perceptions, people only know what you choose to show them. So in this case, I was showing them who I am as a person for the first time. So a lot of people have gone, wow, Lewis has grown up. Wow, Lewis has changed. And then some people are going, he's, he's still the same fun person. But So actually for anyone that's going to do it, be aware that. Um, you've got to put yourself out there and everyone's going to see you in a different light maybe um but yeah i thousand percent recommend it the opportunities are endless and um it sort of just opens doors for you you saw quite a few times like there was things happening where you might not necessarily get on with your team member what would you say the main thing was what you learned from it um i have to i have to admit I didn't, I didn't really fall out with anyone. It was like my, was like my own game plan was just be friends with everyone. So yeah. then I never get taken into the boardroom. Um, <laughs> I just, I kept saying the same thing to everyone whenever they asked me. I was like, all you can do is just support the, the, pro, the project manager and win the task. That's all you can do to be successful in that. Um, so that's the advice that I told everyone. That's what I went in there with. I didn't care what they were doing. If it was right or wrong, support them. Make sure that you do the very best job you can do within those remits. Because if you start fighting the project manager, you're going to be dragged into the boardroom. That was my perception. Um, so uh, yeah, anyone that's going to be involved in it, or if you're going to be taking part in The Apprentice, I would say um, just get on to get along. A big part of business is learning to compromise. A big part of business is forging relationships with people you never thought imaginable. I've left with friends that I would never speak to. Right, and Mark, I would never speak to that kid in a million years. But here we are, we're, we're really close. Um, like, yeah, I think that's it. Just be open and be, be there to make friends. That Best person to work with and why? Um, I really enjoy working with Gemmelin. 
uh, in The Apprentice. I know it's quite it's quite a few months back now. I'm surprised people might even, people might not even remember who who's who. But um, Gemmelyn and me got on really well. Um, so she was just a nice, honest, open person. Um, she was a pure pleasure to work with. We used to just mess around off camera, joke and talk. And um, and I sort of felt like a connection, like she was a bit of a big sister to me. So it was nice when we came out and I got to meet her son and meet her boyfriend and, and actually see a bit of her life. And um, although we do all kind of speak, I mean, this, just this morning we were all taking a piss out of each other in a group chat. Like that happens like every day, but it's not the same anymore. Obviously you're not there in five, in five minutes, but I feel like whenever I need something, I can reach out to them. Yeah. Um, which is quite nice. Yeah, it sounds like you've come out with like quite a few good friendships. Lord Sugar, um, Claude and Karen, what were they like? Um, I, I think that you don't really get to see much of them, unfortunately, in terms of their real true personalities. I feel like when they're there on the, on the show, they have to play a character, which makes sense because if you break the character, of the show, they start being nice off camera and, and strict on camera, it wouldn't have that same... Um, that same appeal it wouldn't have that same sort of oomph behind it I would say that uh, Claude did do that occasionally though. he did sort of show his true self and he you know you can tell he's very just a nice kind old 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 guy like he's just a really nice chap but he's you know he's very successful as well and I think when you get to that point I'd, I want to be like Claude because he's very humble and he's willing to talk to people um Karen Karen came across to me just very strict and didn't really seem keen on talking to me or talking to anyone in fact like it's quite sad um but again, it's it's who you choose to be as you grow older. Like I feel like when you get to a level of success, you should just be open and friendly with everyone. Because why? What what sort of threat do they pose to you anymore? They couldn't. No matter what they say, you, you're successful. So it's a shame that she, she comes across like that. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh, Lord Sugar, I'd say he he just seemed like a happy guy. Like he, he was in the in the boardroom. He's do you know what? He just for me, he seemed it was the first time I'd seen him in real life. So. Um, he just came across as frail. Like an old, he was an old guy. He's an old guy. You forget about this. Um, you know, he walks quite slow, and he's you know, it's just like watching an old guy. He's very successful, and when he's when he's in the boardroom, he seems to just get bored <laughs> of listening to people. He used to sit and spin his pen quite a lot while you're talking. Um, but he's an interesting guy as well. Um, so yeah, I, I find him quite interesting. Um, but looking at him off camera, I remember just watching him. He'd wander around the different sets because obviously they put in different locations. I remember him going around taking pictures of like the old buses and stuff and we were sat there. We had to do our filming first and, and he was getting ready. And it just reminded me of him just seeing an old guy. He's just, just happy. He just seems like a happy guy. Would you say your life has changed since leaving in any way? I would say I was, I was definitely on a certain path. Um, it de do you know what? I was doing very well with fitness in the gym and I was smashing it at work and and it was all going really nice there. It was in a really solid routine. Um, it didn't mess that routine right up because I've just started taking yes, saying yes to pretty much. I've always said yes to opportunities, whatever they may be. I, I analyze them and nine times out of 10, I'll say yes, unless it's really detrimental because you never know what's going to happen out of that. Obviously, when The Apprentice came out, lots of opportunities came out. I tried to say yes to as many things as possible. But what happened is it destroyed my routine of gym and work and, and it kind of messed all that up. But new jobs came out of it. So then my routine has changed even more. So I'm just sort of, it completely changed my life in the sense that my whole routine and everything I was doing on that current path definitely changed. But I think that I'm, I'm getting back to a point where I can control what's going on again. And I'm looking at opportunities and thinking, right, well, what's my next step now? Like I've already sort of moved away from the apprentice because it was a part, it was quite a while, but I'm not going to try and cling on to that because that was just a step. Now what's next? Um, so I'm looking ahead and thinking, right, well, what, what will I do next? What have I always wanted to do? So things like podcasts or things like, talking to I really you know one thing that I learned was talking to kids at universities and colleges I've been telling my friends and sharing advice for years but but actually sitting into a room of people and talking about it and all of a sudden you're on a platform where they will listen to you um I want to continue doing that I want to continue inspiring people um so yeah it's definitely changed my life for the better I would say it fast tracks a lot of things because what people do is they perceive you as you're already at a point where you're successful um which is why you're on the show but actually I'm still trying by trying my ass off to, to get to a point where I'm you know I'm making loads of money some people might say it's successful because I have loads of different things going on, but at the same time, I'm not making loads of money yet, so I don't see that as success. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a two-pronger. People perceive you as that successful person now, so um, that's quite nice, I suppose. Okay, so what would you say your next step is in your career, your main goal, next step? Yeah, so, um, well, there's a few things going on, and it's probably a lot of work to be doing, but hey, I, I was walking to my car yesterday, and I thought, I'm not happy unless I'm doing as much as possible. I, I, I said, I said the other day, I was, uh, 
I was posting out everything. I was on social media, I was on Twitter, in LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and I was sharing all these different things about podcasts, about this and this and this and that. And all these different um, people booked in that I'm going to interview and all these different things that are coming up that I'm going to be a part of. And I said to myself, like, I want people to turn around to me and say, how the fuck does he do it all himself? Mm-hmm. I want people to think he must have a team of people helping him. And that's, that's my personal goal. So that's what I'm striving towards. So, um, you know, I've got hidden travel. That's something that me and Luke are doing. We have to wait until coronavirus is over, but we're doing that. That's, that's a given. There's no, there's no backing down from that now. Um, I've been, so two guys approached me with an agency. Uh, they wanted to start. They'd not had one before, but I have worked in agencies for a while. And I've also been in marketing for quite a long time. So uh, I'm fronting that for them. So essentially I'm starting my own agency with these guys paying for it, which is quite nice. Um, which is quite hard as well with coronavirus, but hey, huh? And then the podcast series is something I've, I've, I used to do when I was younger. I used to go knock on entrepreneurs' doors and interview them on video. Um, and they were on YouTube from like two or three years ago. And, it, and, and taking part in stuff like this has inspired me to get back to it. So I've started a podcast series called Fuck the Norm, which is very much about seeking out people that have always said they're going to do something and done it. And it's always been different. And it's always a path less followed. And people have always maybe laughed at them along the way and then they made it. And then people asked them how they did it. So that's something I'm doing now. Uh, alongside that will be a vlog series. So just vlogging that. I also want to get into um, some more. I got out of the shower before this call. I was, I was rushing to get ready and I had an inspiration. I was like, it's that. yeah, I was like, slept in. But I was just thinking, why don't I, why don't I get out there and uh, just put on free courses? Why don't I just, why don't I just, people always try and charge money for shit because they think, oh, I'm worth this now. I was on this show. I don't think that's funny. It's bollocks. I think the, the, a real person, a true person that's really wanting to push people to succeed will do it for free. You know, maybe when I'm when there's a stadium full of people, then I can charge money. But until then, I'm going to help as many people as possible. So I'm going to put on um, free networking events. So basically, I'm going to invite people down to you know for a couple of hours, and we're going to talk about tips and things that I've learned that have got me to where I am now. Now I only just decided this in the shower half an hour ago, but I can see that being something interesting because when I talk to the universities, I talk to them, they they go away and they they message me afterwards and like, oh, that was really motivational, it's really inspirational, and I'm thinking. But I'm just sharing my story. So actually, maybe it connects with people because I've just gone through the same shit that everyone else has gone through. So I'm going to start doing that as well. Um, and that's it. No, that sounds good. Inspirational. Busy. busy. <laughs> Super busy. No plans to become TikTok famous then, just yet? Oh, yeah. That's what else I was doing. So TikTok, uh, so that became part of a marketing investigation because I wasn't willing to sit in front of a client and go, I don't know how it works. There's loads of social media marketers and loads of marketers are very scared to try new things. So I thought, fuck this is a new platform. It's not going away. I want to be the first one on it to figure out how it works. So I've been playing with that and making some cool content. Actually, after this, I'm going to the garden and doing something really cool today. Uh, so you're probably going to laugh. Um, in terms of that, so that's just another, another form of content. It's just me allowing me to be a bit creative and just have a bit of fun. Oh, and I'm learning guitar as well. Um, my guitar is on there. I just saw it, but I'm, so I've been playing guitar for quite a while. Uh, the last through, through, through lockdown, uh, I've wanted to learn it for years, but I never found the time to just sit down and do it. So that's another personal challenge. So you've got travel company, digital agency. I want to start a pod. Well, I'm starting a podcast. I'm learning guitar. I've been playing with TikTok and creating creative videos. And I'm also putting together courses where people can come and just sit and listen and talk about like a sort of a support group, motivational support group, people who want to fucking smash it and don't know who else to turn to. Sounds brilliant. Like, it just proves like you can do anything. People say they don't have time and... You actually I don't have time. You can, make, you can make exactly, but you can make time if you really want to do something. You can make time, can't you? So you should tell this to my business partner who's been waiting for me to rewrite the business plan for the last six months. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it this week, and I'm like, you know what I'm doing this week? I've just decided I'm gonna. And he's like, you need to write the business. I had to rewrite it, you see, because what I took on the Apprentice a year ago, it's out of date, like massively changed since then. So I need to rewrite it, or we can't do anything with it. But I think that's the problem with the business plan. You write it, and then as soon as you do anything in that business, it changes. So anyone that says they follow their business plan past the first month is, is an asshole because I hate it because it must mean you're a psychic. Like literally everything changed for me. I, did, I went on the apprentice with an idea. I came off and six months later, I'm like, this, this is what the business should be. This is a real business here. That was an idea and this is a real business. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got to rewrite everything. Um, but yeah, you're right. What you just said there, anyone that says they don't have time to do something can, and, and I exercise as well. I, I try and exercise like five times a week, an hour a day. Like, that pisses me off and people say, oh, I've not got time to go to the gym. I'm like, I've got a full-time job. I'm doing something on the side. I'm also learning this. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I can do it and I'm just an average guy, someone who's better than me or smarter than me, they can figure it out. Right, definitely. 
And my final question is how come you always manage to get yourself into so much trouble on social media, like with the concert and there was another one recently, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, uh, the dildo. That was... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it is? This is what I figured. So over the years, if you actually Google past The Apprentice to me from stories before The Apprentice, there's lots of things out there that I did before anyone knew who I was. And it was just me doing anything that I thought was fun. So if I ever saw an opportunity, like I said, back in, so if you, if you actually go on my YouTube channel, when I was four, four, four years ago, I do a video, right? And I, the video, I'm sat in front of the camera and I say, I'm sick of not getting anywhere in life. From this moment forward, any opportunity that I come comes my way I'm going to say yes to it and everything that I want to do that I think is fun I'm going to join it I'm going to be a part of it and I'm going to see where this takes me in life this is why I say on the video I played this out for the kids at university they didn't believe me and I said this me when I was younger no money no idea what I'm doing no career probably a second second job third job maybe and I was like this is who I want to be and this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to get there so I followed that ethos for the last four four years and I've just I said yes to most opportunities. So like anything that came across that was interesting or could mean that I go and because of that, I meet someone that then leads me somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I had this vision where I, I realized that every time, so you're going along in your life like normal, right? It's like a straight line. And then you might meet a boyfriend or girlfriend, right? At that point in your life, you might just walk in through a bar and you get chatting to them. And then all of a sudden your life goes like this or you go like that or whatever. I had the same realization where it doesn't matter where you are in the world, but if you're out and about doing things that are different to everybody else, you never know who you're going to meet. And at that point you meet that person, they might turn around to you and say, you know what? I want to invest a million pounds in you. Which is something like that. It might be, have you ever thought about this? Whatever that is, it can send your life on a completely different path, but actually you're not going to get those opportunities unless you get out there and do different things. So I started doing things like acting classes, trying to learn guitar. I did, uh, what else did I, I I swam in the traffic center, like trying to do prank videos, my friends. I just, I went, I, went, I once got a trampoline park to let me in there with 15 of my friends with Nerf guns and we played Hunger Games in the trampoline park before it was open, got all the staff involved. These are things I was doing before anyone knew who I was. And these are things I did just because I wanted to take any opportunity I could get my hands on. I ended up modeling with snakes. One day I pretended to be a car park attendant. I put a yellow jacket on, I stood in the car park and I just started parking cars for no reason. And I part them all ridiculous and I gave them all free coffee and I made friends with the guy who owns a coffee shop and that guy now is a business owner. And the point is you never know what's going to happen until it happens. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just what I do. I just say yes. And that's why when you notice I'm always in trouble or whatever, I'm not in trouble. I'm just doing different things. And it's not because I'm trying to be different. I know I'm different. I don't have to try. I just say, well, that sounds fun. I'm going to do it. And if you, if the, 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 I think the difference between someone who's successful and someone who's not is the person that has an idea, actions it, does something about it, and then goes, well, that worked or it didn't work. Whatever it is. I only decided I'm going to do a podcast last week. This week, I've got six guests, uh, seven guests booked on. I've done all the artwork for it, and I've had my first one the other day, and I'm into me one tomorrow. The point is, if you have an idea, just do it, and you might get in trouble, and the shit might get crazy. You might end up in the papers for doing a ridiculous thing. You might end up holding a dildo in front of your mum in the paper. Whatever it is something different is going to happen. And I'd rather my life be like that than what if. Thank I don't you. know if any of that helps. That's just me rambling. It's like the ramblings of a madman. It does help, actually. I think it will be quite good. So, yeah. I'll tell you what. I don't know what's going to happen. What, are we, what year are we in? 2020. I don't know what's going to happen in the next five years. I know where I want to be. I don't know how to get there. I don't know what steps to take. I don't know how to start a fucking travel company. But I'm just doing it. And I tell you what, in five years' time, whether it's successful or not, I can guarantee I will have learned a shitload of things. Like whether it's relevant then, now, or whether it makes me successful in the travel business or not, that will then lead me somewhere else. I don't know who I'm going to cross paths with along the way. Um, but I'm going to help as many people as I can whilst I get there. I'm just going to share this ethos. The problem is I, I can't... The problem with this, this ethos, this mentality I'm putting into the table is that because I'm not successful and I've not made loads of money, people don't listen to it. But I bet you any money in 10 years when I do make it, they'll go, how the fuck's he done it? And I'll be all this content, this trail, this paper trail of things that I did along the way that people will be like, shit. And it's like a blueprint for just do this. And I'm just following the advice I was given five, six years ago before I went to university. Oh, uh, when I was 21, before I went to university, I'm following their advice and I'm going to keep going. No, I think that's good advice actually. Because like you say, it's, who you meet along the way isn't it like for me I had this idea I'm probably a bit like you actually I literally had this idea of doing interviews interviewing like interesting people and again I was like I'm gonna do it 
got to do it, start now, get it done. And who knows, like you say, no one knows the next five years, whether it's going to be a success, whether it's going to be a flop, like no one knows. I am, um, one thing I thought about with the podcast and the thing about content and making things that I find fun, like I'm re- the thing I'm really in the garden about that is going to make you laugh. Like it's making me laugh, think about making it. So it's going to be a banger. Um, but the point is like, I don't, like you, you shouldn't, don't care. I don't care. I don't care if someone goes on a video and has the audacity to press thumbs down on a YouTube video because that little bell end is going nowhere in life. I don't care if the videos don't get watched because it's not about now. It's about in five years time, like already my old videos from four years ago, when I sit in front of the kids and I say, that's me. I say, look, there's that video. That's what I was like, watch it. And they go, oh, isn't it good you kept a record of it? That's what I'm doing. I'm keeping a record because you will gar- you can guarantee that soon people are going to ask me how, and I'll go, there you go. When you were all laughing at me and you all thought, what a dick or whatever. And then actually I went on the apprentice things changed or whatever. It's, you can see the difference. It's first they laugh at you. So it's first they uh, ignore you. Then they laugh at you. No start again first they laugh at you then they ignore you then they fight you and then you win you gotta go through all them shit stages first and then they same people turn around to you and go how did you do it it's like easy i wasn't you um and yeah so just don't give a shit if people watch or even listen it's it's irrelevant as long as you if you've got something to say just go out there and say it no one can take that away from you um and as long as you're trying to help and you have a point and you're inspiring others along the way who gives a fuck um Oh yeah, and I was going to say, and imagine if I'd never filled in that apprentice application form when I saw it online that day. That's a point. I just saw something, I just filled it in and sent it off there and then because I saw an opportunity and I actioned it. That's just an example of one of those things. There's about a thousand million things that never happened, but that was just one that I didn't miss. I take every opportunity for that reason. Funny enough, I was having the conversation literally just before this interview started. And I said, at the end of the day, like, I've had a few people have unfollowed me already. A few people have probably taken the mick, but every single one of them who's taken the mick for, for a start is still giving me a view. Yeah. It's still but they're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So, I just it pisses me off because I don't like, I don't get annoyed at the person. It annoys me because that they actually spend their lives like that. Because imagine wasting your life. I've stopped trying to change their mind. Then people like that, I've stopped because. Well, I'm a little bit selfish because the more people that I convince to be successful, the more competition for me in future. Because what if they decide to start a travel company? I'm fucked. So I've stopped trying to change other people's minds if they're not willing to listen. If they're willing to be berate and to piss out other people, great, because that means you're doing something right. I'll tell you one thing that's quite interesting. None of my friends in my group chat said anything about The Apprentice when it was on TV. I've known these guys for 10 years and not one of them said anything. And it wasn't the fact that they were, they were embarrassing. Like they were just not saying anything because it was like, shit, he's doing something different. Mm-hmm. And not, I think everyone wants you to do well, but no one wants you to do better than them. Yeah. My friends only now mention it occasionally. Yeah, I'm in papers all the time. I'm talk- and loads of people are talking to me about it. Yeah, my closest friends. I'm in Sainsbury's every day and the guy texts me on Twitter saying, I've just been in Sainsbury's in the same aisle as you. Yeah, my closest friends don't mention The Apprentice. It just goes to show people want you to do good and people want you to do well, but no one wants you to do better than them. So when, interestingly as well, when I share, I shared a video the other day of me talking and all these different chats and stuff at universities, someone put a compilation together, I put it on YouTube. The lowest views were on Facebook, which is my family and friends for 20 years, 20, 29 years are all on there. But Twitter and Instagram are the newest lot of people that have just seen me. So it just goes to show us who, who cares more and who wants to see you do better. Um, but the odd, every now and again, someone will surprise you. I occasionally get a message from someone in school saying, really proud of you, you're a different sort of person, you've done so well they don't know they just perceive me as that and that's what people will perceive you as if you've got something to say you're putting it out there in the world you run a podcast it doesn't matter if like i said don't give a shit anyone anyone even views it just keep doing it keep consistent because every fucker quits when it gets like i'm like oh no one's watching it and everyone quits and then in two three years they go why did i do that same with guitar same with anything else in life same with business everyone just quits just keep doing it give a fuck no one who cares eventually someone will, you'll do a video and it'll just be Loads of people watch it and then they watch all your other stuff. I don't know. That's just my personal advice. Yeah, no, That's just, I well, think I it makes sense. it makes sense to me. So really Cheers for having me on there. It's a it's a good start of the day. I got to run mental ramblings uh to camera. It was lovely to meet you. And you, thank you. See you later, Alicia. Bye bye. See you later. Bye. Now I hope you all enjoyed this week's interview and I hope you've all learned something from this week's interview. I know I definitely did. I think the point what stood out for me was about not caring what other people think because first they'll take the mick, then they'll ignore you, and then finally they'll ask you how you've done it. 
and that stood out for me so much because it is so true and I'm sure we've all seen it happen when you start doing something for yourself people start unfollowing you so it's important to keep going with what you want to do and what you want to achieve in life why not follow Lewis on social media I'll put his social media platforms here so you can all head over and see what he's getting up to as well and follow his journey on becoming successful. See you all next week. Bye.